Have you ever had this happen to you? Let's say you're working on a project. You need to create a template for editors to use in Premiere. So for this example, I just have a simple text and you're like, all right, well, I need for editors to be able to change the text, maybe change the size and a font. So then you're like, all right, let's create an essential graphics panel here. Let's uh, create our menu for Mogart and Premiere Pro. You're like, all right, I'm gonna drag in the source text. You're like, all right, that's good, text. Now they can easily edit the text, that's awesome. Then you're like, all right, maybe this should change the size. You're like, all right, let's go to edit. Let's allow them to change the size. Like, all right, good. Then you're starting to think, like, no, that's not good enough. Let's see if they can edit the font as well. So you're gonna click on edit. You're like, let's enable custom font selection. So you're, you're gonna click okay. You're good to go. You're like, all right, they got plenty of options here. And then you're like, wait, that's way too much control for editors. So. Yeah, it's not gonna work. We need to limit them to like three fonts or something like that. And by the way, what is it about editors and control? Like it seems like any project that I work on, there's always this question it's like, hey, Sergey, can, can you create an option to where maybe you don't give them too much control, maybe get rid of some of the control, uh, maybe limit them to like three fonts. What is it about editors? I mean, if you're an editor, let me know, I'm curious. What did you guys do uh, to gain that kind of reputation in the industry? I'd just like to know. All right, well, anyway. Then you're like, no, that's too much control. Let's get rid of the font. But now you're like, well, I still need to give them some kind of option to where they can change maybe like between three fonts. And uh, then you're like, all right, well, I have this drop down menu. And by the way, that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. I'm gonna show you how to create this drop down menu to where you have only like three fonts, but three is just for this video. But if you wanna have more than three or less, uh, you, you should be able to figure that out. So then you're like, okay, I did limit them to three fonts. I'm gonna call this font. And now we can easily change it between three fonts and that's it. They can't do anything else. It doesn't matter what they do in here, even in After Effects, right? It doesn't matter what you type. It's only gonna say impact. It's gonna say whatever you choose from this drop-down menu. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this drop-down menu, how to set it up in After Effects, how to rig it, how to limit the text only to three fonts. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to create a custom drop-down menu that will have the list of all of our custom fonts. And for that, we're just gonna select this text. We're gonna go to Effect Controls Panel, right-click, navigate over to the Expression Controls, and in here we have a drop-down menu control. So click on it. Now you have it in here. We're gonna change the name of it to Font. And then we're gonna adjust this list right here. We're gonna create our own custom list with our fonts in here. So let's click on the edit to do that. Then we're gonna change the first one to impact. The second one's gonna be Times New Roman. And then the third one is gonna be Tahoma. All right, so we have all three of them in here. If you want only two, you can select one and just uh, delete it like this by pressing on minus. If you wanna add more, just click plus, you get the idea. So we're only gonna have three. I'm gonna press okay. So now we have our custom menu, but it's just a drop down menu. It doesn't really do anything unless we attach it to our expression. So let's do that next. We're going to navigate over to the source text property, select it, hit S twice to solo it, and then we're going to apply an expression on this property. Hold down Alt and click on Stopwatch to create an expression. So in here, we're going to write some code. And the first thing I want to do is to bring this drop down menu into our code. So to do that, we're going to create a variable and a variable just made up English doesn't really mean anything. It, it can really be anything. You can say anything you want, but in my case here, I'm going to say font menu because that's what this is right here. So we're going to say this made up word, we're going to assign something to you and we're going to say you're going to be, and then we're going to pick whip to the menu here. Now we do want the value of the, of this drop down menu. So we're going to say period value. All right. So we have that. So now if I call this up, watch this. As you can see, whatever I pick in here, even though it's a menu, it has a lot of different like words and stuff like that. The only thing you can really access is the value, right? Because whatever you pick, like the first item, it's just gonna say one. So all of this jazz, all of this thing, it just means a number. I know it looks complicated, but it's, it's just a number. It's the same thing as a slider, just in the visual form, right? So whatever you pick, like second item, right? It's gonna say second. So drop down menus start with item one. It's really important that you know this. So the first item is just number one. The second is number two and so on. So we're gonna use this in our expression. So again, remember the drop down menu, it's it, even though it looks like a complicated thing, it only means a number like one, two, three and so on. All right, so now we uh, made that clear. Let's make another variable. We're gonna call this one font list. 
And again, it's just a made up English. And essentially this variable is gonna hold a list of three fonts, okay? And uh, in JavaScript, a list is just an array, right? We, we define an array by creating square brackets. So open and close square bracket like this and semicolon is just like a period in the coding world. So in here, in between open and close square brackets, we're gonna list our items. So the first thing we need to list is the impact font because that was the first item on our list. So to do that, again, make sure the blinker is right here, navigate to, to the expression helper, let's go to text, and then right here we have font. So we're gonna click on it, and this basically will help us to type the font in here because I mean, you can type it in if you remember it, but sometimes it, it's better to use this. So we're going to do this. We're going to uh, search for impact and we're gonna select this, press okay. So now we have our first font listed in double quotes because it's called string encoding world. Essentially it's just our way of telling the computer like, hey, it's just a text, it's not a code, it's not a keyword, it's not a function, it's just a text, let it be, right? Don't do anything with it. Okay, so we have the first uh, item in our list. Now the second item, you just do comma and then you go with the second item and so on. So let's add a second item. The second font was Times New Roman. So we're going to do the same thing. Navigate over here, text, font, and then let's search for Times New Roman. We're going to go with the regular, press OK. So now we have two items in our list. So one and then two. And again, they're separated by comma. So we're going to go to the end of it here, insert another comma. We're going to insert the third item. And the third one was Tahoma. So we're gonna, again, navigate over here, text, font, and then we're gonna search for the Homa. There you go, regular, and then okay. So we have our list, which is good, and what do we do with it? And by the way, in the yesterday's video, in the previous video before this one, you can click on it at the top over here, so the thing will pop up, click on it if you wanna learn more about that video, but what that video is, is me talking about how to access the styles and the properties of the text, like all of these items, in the expression, uh, how to access them using expressions. And uh, I think you'll find it useful if you don't know how to do that. So make sure you watch it first before you watch this one. So then let's keep going. So we have our list and then I'm gonna access this list. I'm gonna say front list. If I click away, notice we have all of our items listed. So how do I access only one item at a time? Like the first one, the second one, the third one. It is a list right? So to access the list, it's the same way how you set it. In other words, you have to use square brackets, open and close square bracket. And whatever index value you type in here, that's what it's going to display for you. So if you want to list the first item, even though it's the first item in the list, the arrays start with zero. Drop down menus start with one. It's confusing, but you kind of have to know that. So to access the first item, even though naturally you would think to type one, if I type one, it's gonna show us the second item, right? Well, so that's that's not good. So to access the first item, you have to type zero with arrays. So boom, there you go, the first item, impact. The second item, again, is just typing one, and the third item would be two. So that's how we access the list, right? So, but what I wanna do, I want to do this. I don't want to be manually typing it in here. I want to control this number with the drop down menu because remember, even though it's a drop down menu, it's just a number. So I'm just going to say, hey, font menu, which is the value of this drop down menu, let's replace you for this number right here. Even though it's English, remember, it's just a number. Don't get tripped up. All right. So then if I click away, if I go to impact, it shows me Times New Roman. And here's why because remember, the first item on the list in the drop down menu is number one. The first item on the list with arrays is zero. So even though it's set to one, we're seeing the second item because that's true one in the list, right? In the array. So to offset that, we just have to say, hey, subtract one from it. Because right now it's one, subtract from one, it's gonna be zero. So when we pick two, it's gonna be two, subtract from you know one from it, then it becomes one. So essentially we're just offsetting it in the negative direction. So when I click away, now when I pick impact, as you can see, we see impact. If I go with Times New Roman, we see that and so on. So it is fixed. So we're gonna use this in, the, in another line here. So I'm gonna actually select this and I'm gonna copy it and we're gonna keep going. So again, make sure you watch the previous video for what I'm about to do next because it might be confusing. So I'm going to pick whip to the source text property right here. We want to access the styles, like these styles. So we're gonna say, period style. And by the way, you can just type it like this, you know, by referencing to itself. You can also say this 
property and it will be the same thing as you can see it'll work or you can just start with style too either one will work so but we're going to do this we're going to pick whip to it we're going to say period and then style and so now we want to get the font we want to set the font right so we're going to say period and then navigate over to expression helper we're going to go to text properties properties again and in here we're going to look for a set function called set font so this right here set font when you do that in here you can set any font so for example i can set this impact font right i can just type impact boom it's going to set it to impact and so on but what we want to do we want to set it to the list here so we're going to just drop the list here so i'm going to just put this list in here obviously it's going to list all three of them which will not work but we can access them remember square brackets we can say give me the zero one the first one impact and it gives me impact give me the second one one right it gives me that one and the third one would be tahoma and it gives me tahoma but again remember we can access the list with the drop down menu by copying the drop down menu again it's just a number and then we did subtract one from it to offset it right so now watch this if i select impact it goes to impact if i select times new roman it goes to times new roman and so on so now you're done that's all you need to do it's just a three line of text and i know i over explained i'm known for that but i really want you to get it because once you understand the process it's very simple so once you've done this the next step would be to right click open an essential graphics then you'll have the essential graphics in here you can drag the source text property you can edit you know maybe you can say hey i don't want the ability for editors to change the font maybe just the size and then you'll see the size the text and they can change the text they can adjust the size that's good but now you can do this you can select this press e and now you can drag your drop down menu right at the top here we're going to call this one font and now they can change the font but they can only pick from three of the fonts that you listed in here so impact times new roman Tahoma. They can edit the text, the size. All right. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. If uh, you want to support us, what we do here, the easiest thing you can do is to subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment below. Also become a part of our free private mentoring group on Facebook. Just go to ukrainmedia.com slash community and join. We'd love to have you there. We have some giants of this industry in that group rubbing shoulders with everybody and they're just so kind so helpful yeah, definitely join the group and if you want to support us what we do here you can purchase our tools by going to ukramini.com we have some smart tools that i think will save you a lot of time and money so definitely check that out but in the meantime my name is sergey proknevsky and this is ukramedia.com